In terms of why we thought it was important to do this study, we were really motivated by two main issues. First was as relates to our daily experience as reproductive endocrinologists. Every day we're correcting common misperceptions about fertility. Whether it relates to other comorbidities or other fertility diagnoses, every day we're reviewing the basic facts about fertility and infertility treatment. The, around the time that we were planning this study, there were a whole host of recent uh, articles that had come out in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Atlantic Magazine, a whole bunch of articles talking about fertility myths, about women feeling underinformed or uninformed about their fertility. And we realized that the media was just not doing a great job of helping women understand their natural fertility. Neither, unfortunately, did it seem were doctors. So we wanted to figure out what's really going on and what general fertility knowledge is in the United States. At the same time as women in medicine, we also realize that the specific rigors of medical training make female medical students and trainees a particular at-risk group for delaying childbearing and ultimately having fertility issues. So we actually received a grant to look at the issue of fertility knowledge and female medical trainees. So given these two issues, we determined that the goal of our study was two-pronged. There is not any current validated fertility and infertility treatment survey in the United States, and so we decided to create one. Um, the FITKS, or the Fertility and Infertility Treatment Knowledge Survey, uh, was a study that we wanted to do to essentially validate what fertility knowledge is in the United States. Um, we looked at creating separate instruments for lay people and medical trainees, and ultimately determined that the best use would come from one instrument that could be used in any patient population or provider population. Those were the main goals of this study. The findings of our study confirmed our expectations that fertility knowledge amongst the general population and that amongst the population of medical trainees was actually quite low and fractured. So for instance, in the general population, a third of respondents reported that birth control pills can affect long-term female infertility, which is clearly not true. Um, and in the medical trainee group, um, although their knowledge base increased with advancing year of training, their knowledge was actually very fractured, uh, specifically in the underestimation of success rates from assisted reproductive technologies like IVF. So it's our job as educators to um, probably do a better job, you know, first and foremost, training our medical trainees properly so that they can pass on their knowledge base to their patients that they see in their office but there certainly is a lot of work to be done. In thinking about directions for future research, that's probably the main one. I think we need to think about how, as educators, as physicians, we can work on expanding awareness of fertility um, and utilizing the newfound momentum behind the term fertility awareness uh, in both the provider and patient populations. I think we can do a lot more in helping women navigate the landscape of their fertility as they go from adolescence to, uh, to really to through to menopause. Um, so that's one realm. I think the other thing uh, we would be thinking about doing is expanding and validating this uh, instrument in a male population. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we know that men are often involved in the procreation process, um, and we need to be, I think, also more understanding of what they understand about the, the fertility process. So I think those are some of the main goals for future research.